Do you have a whiteboard in your house where you leave messages for other members of the household? Perhaps you put post-it notes on a board or bits of paper on the fridge with fridge magnets to leave notes that say buy milk, pay bills and other things you want people to pay attention to. But what if you want to update the message board when you're not in the house? Well today I've got the solution because I'm going to tell you how to build a DIY e-paper Internet of Things message board. My original plan was to use a Raspberry Pi or another low power single board computer simply plugged into a monitor and then share a Google Doc. And if you've ever used Google Docs, you'll know that multiple people can edit it and it updates in real time. So that means everybody could update the document. There's even a mobile app for doing so. And that would update the message board. And that seems like a really easy solution. It's not that simple, unfortunately. The main problem is that you'd need to have a monitor switched on, which would consume power all the time because of the backlight. And it'd also illuminate the house at night. You could have it go into power save, but then no one would see the board unless they got access to move the mouse to wiggle it to wake it up to see what was there. It's not quite the same as writing on a whiteboard, where it's just there and you see it as you walk past. So then I looked for e-paper displays, and e-paper displays are a rather recent piece of technology. They use them in Kindle e-readers, and basically there's no backlight, and it only uses power when it updates. It's got a very low refresh rate of about 2 hertz, so you can't really watch movies on it, but it doesn't use any power unless it updates, and basically you can power it down and walk away, unplug it from a computer, and the message still stays displayed there for several days or weeks. So that seems like an ideal solution. Until I looked at the prices of HDMI e-paper displays, and the only one I could really find available in the UK was from Waveshare, and it's about $500, and in the UK it's about £500. So I carried on looking, and apparently there's a smaller model which is pictured working with a Raspberry Pi. It's about a tenth of the price. It's only seven and a half inches, but I thought that'll be good enough. So I bought one of them, and let's have a look at it. So I've got my e-paper display. It's actually very thin indeed. And obviously no backlight, so just the display. This is the surface where the display appears. It comes with this cable, and it comes with a hat for a Raspberry Pi. And this has got an adapter on that plugs onto the 40-pin GPIO header, and it also has another breakout here for the SPI pins. So I've enabled the SPI on my Raspberry Pi, and I was hoping that something would appear on the display. So I've got my Raspberry Pi booted. It's got a display, but yeah, nothing on my e-paper. So why can that be? Because it's not that simple. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a way to make this SPI display be the main display for your Raspberry Pi or whatever else you plug it into. However, if we look on the Waveshare wiki, it does tell you about what you need to install in terms of drivers, and there's also some Python code, and there's also Arduino examples, so that you can actually display something on this e-paper display. But it would appear we need to write some code to display stuff, rather than just plugging it in and using it as a monitor. So I've installed all the drivers from the Waveshare wiki and cloned everything from GitHub I need, and now there's various examples in a folder which are for different size screens by the look of it. But you need to pick the one for the screen you've got, and the one I've got is a 7.5 inch V2 apparently. Let's run that. And we should see eventually that the paper goes and clears, and every time it does this or initialises it kind of flashes black and white. And now it says hello world, you'll see that appear, and it does this initialization all the time whenever you try and put text on it for some reason. And I haven't been able to hack the examples to make this go away and just update the text. But anyway, it does work, it says hello world, it's done first horizontal, then vertical, a piece of graphics, and then it clears it and everything stops. I ran that example again, then I just pressed Control c halfway through, so I just killed the example and didn't clear it at the end. So now you can see we've still got this written on here. I've disconnected it from the Raspberry Pi. There's absolutely no power, but the display is still there. So um, that's pretty good. It's just like a piece of paper, basically, that you can read. Obviously, no backlight. It's just readable in daylight, which is pretty good. So that seems to work well, and it looks really good for our application. Now, I did leave it disconnected for about three days, and the display was still absolutely perfect. I'm not sure how long it takes until it fades away, but for a message board you update every few days, it should be perfect. The e-paper clearly works, but how are we going to update it from a mobile or from a web page or somewhere in the cloud? Well, before I tell you, it's time for a quick ad from the video sponsor, and that is PCBWay. PCBWay provide both PCB manufacture and PCB assembly under the same roof, so you can get them to solder the components onto your PCB as well as make the board itself. As well as standard fiberglass PCBs, PCBWay can manufacture aluminium PCBs, flexible PCBs, and rigid flex PCBs, which are part rigid and part flexible. 
Prices start at just $5 for 10 PCBs and $30 for 10 PCBs with assembly. But new customers can get $5 credit so you can get your first 10 PCBs for free. PCBWay also offer advanced services such as PCB design, x-ray inspection, electronic probe inspection, impedance control and various certification capabilities including ROHS and UL certification. Find out more now at PCBWay.com and I've put that link in the description to this video. One day I'll actually make some PCBs using PCBWay PCBWay services and use them in one of my projects. But now it's back to this e-paper, and I think this seems like a good opportunity to learn some Python scripting. I 3D printed a case for that and it's just a frame that holds the e-paper and that's held in with some sticky pads on the back and there's a base there to hold the Raspberry Pi and the hat and of course all we really need is the power cable going in because this is going to be the display for the main thing that we're going to build but how are we going to make it into an Internet of Things device and get that data and display it on the display? Well I really like the idea of using a Google Doc as the cloud service because it's really accessible and easy to update it already has mobile apps and of course you can update it through the web page. So after after a quick Google search, I found the Google Docs API, which allows you to write code that can read or write to Google Docs and also to Google Drive. I also found a really great guide, and there are several out there, but a few of them are quite out of date now. I'll put a link in the video description to the one I use, which is from 2020. And the guide tells you how to go about setting up the Google Docs API and granting access to a Google Doc for your own application. This involves creating a service account which you share your Google Doc with, and then the service account gets permissions to your Google Doc either to read it or to edit it. The Google Developer Console generates a security key which you download to the device you want to run the code on, and that allows authentication with the Google Doc. You just share your Google Doc with the service user and that completes giving access to your own code to read and write to the Google Doc. And the guide I've put in the description also has some sample Python code that shows you how to read and write to Google Docs so you can access it for your own code and that's exactly what we need to do to read the Google Doc once it's been updated and write it to our ePaper. So I've also integrated the ePaper code and that API to actually write to the ePaper from WaveShare and a few other bits and pieces. So let's have a look at the code that I'm using. So first of all I've created my Google Sheet and that's got one column in it which has got all the stuff I'm going to put on my message board and this neatly fits on the message board with the size font I'm going to use and this is shared with my service user and I'm the owner so I can update it and save it. Over on my Raspberry Pi I've created a folder in my home directory called Sheets and I've got two versions of the code but first of all there's two other folders one of those is the Waveshare library that's got all of the library stuff in for different size screens and the other one is the pick folder which is also from Waveshare. I've taken everything out apart from the true type font that's used to generate the text. So in my version 1 folder I've got my certificate that downloaded, that's the key for authentication. I won't show you the contents but essentially that downloads from the Google Developer Console. And I've also got my Python script so let's have a look at that. A lot of this stuff is from the Waveshare API and the sample code from the guide that I shared. These two lines are for the library and the pick directory I just showed you and various other things here to check those are there and import all of the stuff from them. This is the font we're going to be using which is size 35 which neatly fits on the display and this is the stuff for importing the Google Spreadsheet API and authenticating with it as well. If we scroll down a bit we open the message board which is the sheet called message board and we get the data and that's very easy it's one line which gets the worksheet in column 0. I've got 15 variables which import the 15 rows in that column and that puts them into variables called A1 through to A15. Then we've got the stuff that's taken straight from the ePaper display and what I'm doing is just drawing text using those same 15 variables. And at the end we put the display to sleep which is what it did in the original example. So now if we run that example we should see the ePaper updates with the stuff I just put in my message board spreadsheet. It takes a little while to pull the data in and then renders the display. 
and there it is. That was pretty easy to code and it seems to work well whenever I run that script it pulls in the data from the Google Doc and writes it onto my e-paper. Now the plan is going to be to schedule this so it runs every 5 or 10 minutes and that means it'll update whenever anyone updates the Google Doc but at the moment it's going to update the display every 5 or 10 minutes it's going to reinitialize it do that flashing and then write the same data back to it regardless of whether there's any new data in the Google Doc or not. And it could be that no one puts anything new on the message board for several days. And of course, one of the advantages of the e-paper is it doesn't use power until you update it. So we don't really want to be updating it every five minutes, even if there's no new messages. So I've written a version two of the code, and that writes the data to a CSV file on the SD card of the Raspberry Pi each time, pulls the data in the next time, compares the two, and if there's any changes, then it updates the e-paper, otherwise it leaves it alone. In my version 2 folder I've still got that JSON file which is the security key and now I've got my log CSV as well which logs the old values. So if we now look at my version 2 code we can find we've got a few extra things. So we've got the ability here to read and write to a CSV file and it does that here by opening the file and going through all of the rows. And those variables are called a1old through a15old and this gets written at the end of the code as well so we write the old values and then we read them at the beginning again to compare them. So again, we're getting the values from the spreadsheet, and then we're writing those values, A1 through A15, to that CSV file after we've got the new data. Then we do a comparison using an if statement to check if any of them are different. Then we do the e-paper writing, and you can see that's an indented code block, which is part of this if statement. Otherwise, we just print to the console, there's no new data, and we leave the e-paper display well alone. I've scheduled that up using cron tab e and that means that we can put a schedule on something to run. So what we're actually doing here is running every five minutes. So it'll run on the hour and then five past, 10 past, 15 past and so on. If we change that number to a 10, it would do it every 10 minutes. And that runs a bash script, which is in the folder called sheet sh. And that lives in my home folder and it looks like this. So it says it's a bash script, goes into the correct folder and types the commands that I would type anyway which is python3 sheet 02 pi and that runs the python script. So that will run every five minutes. I'm pretty happy of how that works. I've had it in my house for a few days, updating it periodically and it seems to update the data pretty reliably on the next five minute interval after you update the Google Doc and it always seems to connect and work. This is a Raspberry Pi 4 but of course it's not very taxing on the resources so you probably could run it on any Raspberry Pi with a 40 pin GPIO header and I think that comes all the way down to a Raspberry Pi 2 which would be much lower power. So it seems like quite a useful thing. I've learned quite a lot doing it and I'm going to put all the CAD and the code in the description to this video. It's on GitHub and links to the articles that I featured in this video. If you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, then those links are in the description below and patrons and YouTube channel members get all the videos up to a week early. So don't forget to check that out if you'd like to support the channel. There's more stuff coming up like this and more serious robotics. So don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, that's all for now.